Hey everybody, it's Andrew Cartwright here. Find out why many big banks and lenders have not started accepting PPP loan forgiveness applications. The reasons behind that, why are they putting you off? Why a government oversight group is alarmed about the EIDL and PPP loan fraud and why third quarter taxes may be tricky for the PPP loan claimants after this. For the best news and information, yes, on how to master your money, business, and life, and now it's all about getting, helping us through the government stuff right now, this channel, we're giving away $900 to a random comment. When we hit 90,000 subscribers, all you have to do is subscribe, like, and comment in these videos. We're going to pick it randomly, so you're just in. Also, grab your free stock down below. You can open up an account and get a, literally a free stock up to $1,600 just for opening up an account which is awesome, kind of good right now. So, but first, like you and me, the big banks and lenders, they're as confused as we are. I've read all the different forgiveness stuff that they come out with the oversight and the emails from the SBA and the, the um, PowerPoint presentations and everything regarding the forgiveness terms, which most people are still fogging up over their eyes when they read it over the forgiveness terms with the PPP loan because they're still trying to figure out how, how, how do they do it, right? The SBA PPP forgiveness portal has been open since August 10th. Yes, we're over a month that it's been open, but many big banks and lenders are waiting for PPP loan claimants to wait a little while to apply for the get forgiveness. Now, there are lots of reasons why things and rules are changing all the times so and the banks don't want to get it wrong, wrong, but both Chase and PNC Bank have not yet started taking PPP forgiveness applications. Many people, especially in the comments, have told me that they're getting emails from different banks and institutions to just hold off. People want to get this over with, right? And not have it hanging over their head as a loan with 1% attached to it. They want to just clear the conscience with all this stuff going on with the virus and all the craziness out there. They just want this to be over and done with. Okay, we got the money. We spent it on rent. We spent it on employees. Let's just get it over with already. As they're waiting to see, these lenders are waiting to see if new legislation will make forgiveness process easier easier at the same time they're going after lots of people for fraud at the lower amounts they said that majority of the small amounts there was a lot of fraud in there so it's made the blanket forgiveness tricky they're also wondering whether or not the blanket forgiveness will be offered for all the ppp loans less than 150,000. we know steve mnuchin has pushed for it the president's behind it and most of congress think kind of agrees with it Check with your lender or your PPP loan for further guidance on whether to apply for forgiveness, but it seems like most of the big players and lots of institutions are waiting to see what happens in the coming weeks regarding the forgiveness terms. Now remember, 12 days we have with everybody in Congress there. This is not something Trump can wave a wand and make go away, but Congress can write the forgiveness and the blank of forgiveness in the next stimulus package. Now, meanwhile, a government oversight group warned of an abnormal high number of suspicious and potential fraudulent small business loans, including the EIDL and PPP. A lot of people are using these funds incorrectly as well. They're not following the guidelines. The project on government oversight looked at SBA loans over the course of July and found that over a thousand loans contain suspicious and possible fraudulent information, like your business isn't even there, or you weren't even associated with it, or wasn't even open when you're claiming that you need it, you, you're getting the funds for. This is seven times the amount of bad claims typically found in previous months, and could indicate a larger issue when it comes to the EIDL and the PPP loans. Now, as it progressed, these fraudulent characters probably got more savvy and better at figuring out how to get 
false EID, EIN numbers, false accounts, false names, businesses, maybe ones that had closed, right? You get my drift? I just hope that these new bad apples don't mess up our chances of getting another round of SBA disaster relief funds in the upcoming stimulus package. Remember, everybody's behind it. They said it's been the best program that they've actually put through in the health, through the CARES Act. I think it's an amazing program. I told a lot of people, help people. You know, we did $57 million we helped guide the people through and being an underwriter with the SBA as far as packaging all their stuff since 2012 and being a business broker. It's something that was in my wheelhouse. I know it very well. These loans are great. And yeah, we're going to have some bad apples, but it's a great program. Finally, for those of you out there who filed your taxes on the quarterly basis, right? Or you got to file 2019 tomorrow, right? September 15th, you might run into some unexpected tax issues during the third quarter because of this. Third quarter estimates are due tomorrow, September 15th. And many people that file quarterly and have obtained a PPP loan are wondering, what do you do? What do you do with the fact that you've paid people and you've done like, what are the specific guidelines to follow? Well, here's the problem. Small business owners that have obtained a PPP loan and they're unsure whether their forgivable loan will be able to be tax deducted from their taxes. Is this tax deductible? Under the current rules, the PPP loan funds spent on business expenses are not deductible as on taxes even though the loan forgiveness is tax free. You're not going to it's not I guess going to be counted as income. What Ed Zollars, Z O L L A R S like dollars but with a Z. So Ed Zollars, the CPA at Thomas Zollars and Lynch in Phoenix explained, quote, "Currently, I would like clients that if you want to be safe and you're talking about estimates, then treat the expenses as non-deductible so you so that you overpay basically, right? So you'll overpay. I guess better to overpay than underpay, right? Is what he's saying. While many members of Congress are fighting to make these disaster relief funds deductible on the tax return, and of course there's confusion with them too about thinking, oh, that's income, we shouldn't do that. We'll see how these new forgiveness terms impact this important issue. It's all about the details, right? Like, what are the details? What do we do? Remember when you're, you might just hold off. I know a lot of people are holding off to figure out when they're going to finally figure all this stuff out so that there's clear guidelines on what to do. I hope you found this video informative. And um, please, if you haven't yet liked the video, subscribe and put a comment down below. You could be the lucky one getting the 900. It's a random comment that we, we pick. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys so much. Love you. Take care. Have a great day.